Okay, so we have <laughs> simplified, done. So we're going to look at the Salt Lake City charts. I'm going to bring up the weather packet. I've got it right here. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So pick out the runways now. Salt Lake City, wind 320 at 4. So this is what I'm going to have. I want Andrea to pick the runway. So take a look at your wind there. Your wind is 320 at 4 knots. Gusting to 14. Okay? So, that's our wind. Temperature 31. But we're, all we really care about here is the wind, okay? Um, let's start taking a look. Let's look at the Salt Lake Notams, just to make sure that we're not selecting from a runway that's notamed closed. So, let's read through these notams. Runway 17 and 35 is closed. Actually, let's look at our estimated time of departures, 2200Z. So this is actually only, so this actually opens right when we leave. So we could use this runway technically, because it, it's only right until 2200Z, right when we're supposed to take off. Um, the next one is runway 14 and 32 is also closed. Then we have an obstacle, um, the nav ILS runway 34 left. So this is an ILS that's out. We normally care, but we don't care in this case because we're taking off from Salt Lake, not landing in Salt Lake. Obstacle, another runway, 3-4 left approach light system out. But we don't care because, once again, we're taking off and Salt Lake is good weather. Obstacle, taxiway, taxiway, 16 right, lead off light. We don't care really about lead off lights. Taxiway, taxiway, obstacle, taxiway, obstacle. Not seeing anything here that we really need to look at. Apron, apron, I mean, a ton of notams. Obstacle, okay. So the big, the big takeaway there was runway 1432 is closed, 1735 is closed. So let's go pick a runway now. This is Salt Lake City. I'm going to scroll down to the airport layout chart. So these are our runways we have to choose from. So what do you do when on the notams it doesn't have like a right or a left? Or, like we said 14 to 12. So 1432 is just by itself. It doesn't have a left or a right. The only ones that are left and right in Salt Lake are 3-4 yeah. three, left, 3-4 three, right, and 16 right. left. Right? I was thinking 34. Oh, yeah. 1735. So this one over here is closed, and this one right here is closed. So, yeah, which we wouldn't use even if it was open, right? So, okay. So... Our options to choose from are 3, 4 left, 3, 4 right, 16 left, 16 right. So if we have wind 3, 2, 0 at 4, what is going to be the best match for a runway to take off on? You want to go the same direction. You want to match the wind direction. On, off on the 34. Exactly. And either one. I mean, either either one. But They're both 12,000 feet. But the 34, because it's going the same as like 320, almost similar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The wind is coming from 320. So the thing about the wind of, of why we just match it is because the wind is the only report that we get that is it's technically backwards. It's not telling us where the wind is going. It's telling it's us where it's from. coming from. But everything else we look at from like a plane heading or runway heading, all the VOR, like radials, that's where it's going. 
not where it's coming from. So the wind is, so when we try to go into the wind, we try to pick a heading that matches the direction. That means because wind is always opposite. So yeah, so if it's 3204, we could take off on either 34 left or right. Both of them are open. They're, there was no notums. Okay. So let's pick 34 left then. Okay, so I'm here on our dispatch release page here. We're on this page right here. We're going to type in Salt Lake City. Our time of departure is 2200 Zulu. And our weather is the wind is 320 at 04, gusting to 14 knots. I believe it was 10 statute miles. And. 10 statute miles, few at 9,000, few at 16,000, few at 25,000. So there's not a ceiling. We don't really need to. So we can just go straight to the temperature and put 31 over negative 1, and then altimeter 2985. 31 over 21? 31 over negative 1. So just go 31 slash M. Zero one and then altimeter twenty nine eighty five. I think is what it was. Okay. You said three four left. Okay. So now we're gonna look at our minimums. So let's scroll down to that chart and here it here it is right here. Scrolling over. So this top section right here has everything that we're looking at. So this has all four of those longer runways, 16 left, right, 34 left, and right. You're saying 34 left, so it's right here. So it's the same minimums as all these. So if we're looking for our standard takeoff minimums, we go to standard, and then we are a one and two engine plane, so we are going to be RVR 5000 or one mile. So we'll go back to this. And I just put one statute mile because I can't fit it all in there. The next one is the less than standard. And let's go back. The less than standard here is going to be this adequate visual reference. And that's telling us it's, it's asking us for both of these. It's asking us for the less than standard RVR and then the less than standard visibility. So one box is going to have RVR 1600 and then the next box is going to have quarter mile. So there's the RVR box. That's going to be 1600. And then this box is going to be one quarter statute mile. And then it does have these, so let's go back and take another look. So we can go all the way down. So Salt Lake City, the airport, allows you to go all the way down to 300, 300, 300. However, it's telling us that these are the requirements. This first requirement is a HUD, and that's that's actually a piece of equipment inside the airplane, and we don't have that. So we are nullified from this category. The next one up is centerline lights and high-intensity runway edge lights, basically. So we do have those. They weren't notum closed or anything. The only – this is kind of the one where I was telling us that we we could put 500, 500, 500 in those three boxes – the SkyWest minimums for their op specs only allow them to go down to 600. So either one of those, I don't care if you put the SkyWest minimum or just the minimum in this one. Either one of them is fine with me. It doesn't really matter. 
Yeah, and that's yeah. not that's not going to be something that he won't even look at. So, Bye. no, he he won't. <laughs> he, it's I don't even know if it's on his packet. So, I mean, you fill out the same packet we're doing now, but mm -hmm. he doesn't normally even he doesn't even look at that page because he probably doesn't even know what it is. <laughs> so. Let's go with the 500. We'll just go with what the chart says. Just put what the chart says just to make it not confusing. So that's all we got to do with Salt Lake. Okay. So now we don't have a takeoff alternate, so we can skip number two. We go right to number three, which is our destination. That's going to be Helena. Did we figure out our ETA? You did? Well, uh, yeah, but no. Um, 2345, is it? 2345? Yeah. Okay. And that for sure is the exact ETA, correct? Yeah. I have, yeah. <laughs> I have our flight time as 133. I didn't have anything else. If yeah. not, we can we can run back and we can double check it real quick because our total distance is 620.4. So right now we are still we haven't done like our official we've done the simplified, but we haven't done like the actual flight planning speeds yet, like on the real flight plan. Like so we're still using the 400 speed. So if we want to know our time. It's our, is your time like with taxi in? Yeah. Taxi out only. So oh. make sure it's, yeah. The only thing we add on to it is taxi out. Yeah, so it's. Yeah, a, then I remember his number from yesterday being okay. right. Okay. Oh, yeah, they have it right here. Where's that? 1.551. Yeah, 1.551. Yep. So 60. It was an hour and 33 minutes. Yeah. Yep. Hour 33. So add 10. Hour 43. So if our departure time is 2200, it's then going to be 2343. Would be I our. I need the five. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's two minutes. It just. I'm good with that. But remember, the reason I'm asking you because this flight plan is really tricky. Because take a look at your ETA here in Helena. Oh yeah. Oh that's. Remember, right. if it was it. not, if it wasn't before this. Remember our thunderstorm restriction? If we aren't going to be there before this, now we are beating it by 17 minutes in this case, but that's why literally every minute in this one counts. So we've got to be in this line in order for it to be legal. So let's go back. And it was 23430. Okay. Then our weather at ETA was the winds were 290 at 15. Let's go back. Oh, sorry, 280, 10, gusting to 20. 280, 10, gusting to 20, one mile fog, overcast 1100. Okay, 280, 10, gusting 20 knots. One statute mile fog overcast zero one one. And the temperature, if you go back to the METAR, was twenty five over negative one. Okay. So back to Andrea. If our wind is 280. Yeah. Now you get to pick our Helena runway. Can't wait. I know you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. First of all, though, we are going to go read our Helena notums. Okay. Okay, so here's our notums. I'll just let you guys read through them, and you tell me if there's a problem with anything. What's our actual? Runway five twenty three. What's our actual date? 
I miss um, the 20, or sorry, the, the, so it's the 28th at 1853 Zulu. Because <clears throat> you're saying runway 5 and 23 is closed. Mm -hmm. And. All right. Well, but that was closed anyway, so. Okay. Then all of the it's stuff on it is closed, yeah. Okay, so we know runway 5 and 23 is closed, so yeah. notate that. Okay, next. Anything else? That's What's the that end. What's that 9 and 27 WIP? That means work in progress, construction, oh. 4,082 feet southwest of the approach end of runway 9. It was working progress. Yeah. So, yeah, nothing that affects us. Yeah. yeah. So that's it really, right? They're going to whip you if you use it. Okay. Cool. Let's take a look at FDC notams. There's, there's a few of them, so let's take a look here. Um, initial, or sorry, instrument approach procedure, RNAV. We don't use RNAV in the class, so we can skip that. The next one's also an RNAV instrument approach. The next one's also an RNAV instrument approach. And that's it. Okay, so no, no notams. Okay, so now here is your airport layout. So pick us a runway. <clears throat> now remember, take into consideration well, the wind, first of all, is going to be the big factor. But also remember that we're also forecasted to just be at one mile fog overcast 1100. So we're obviously going to look at that momentarily with the landing track. I mean, 27. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah. I mean, Wind 280. 27 is going to be definitely the best one. It's the longest runway and the, the one that's most into the wind. And it has all the good stuff. This good stuff? Mm -hmm. The lights, yep. Now, <clears throat> that's, you know, yeah, that's just giving us the heads up that this is probably going to be the one that has the best approach, right? So. Let's take a look at runway 27. We're not using Helen as an alternate. Let's go down to the approach charts. Here it is. Yeah. <laughs> ILS or localizer. Um, why runway 27? So let's take a look. Let's go down and see what our minimums are. So what's our minimums on this approach? One and a half. Yeah, one and a half because we got to round that up. Yeah, and then 600. Okay. So with this approach, are we legal to land based on the TAF? We have one mile yeah. fog overcast at overcast 1100. 1100. On the ceiling, yeah, yeah. on the ceiling. But the, what about just the one mile visibility? We're a half a mile short. Yeah, we're a half mile short here. So let's keep going and see if there's something better. Okay, the next one down is ILS or localizer Z runway 27. We talked about this a little bit yesterday. Yeah, that's right. There's just like minor differences, but no. how about how about this one? Does this one work? This is the next one down now. So what are the minimums on this one? Half mile and two feet. Yeah. So this one works. This is the next one down. Oh. This is not the same one you just looked at. Oh. You probably didn't see me scrolling. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. So. This one, so yeah, the, the previous one was this one. Yeah. Okay, so then I kept scrolling down, and there's another ILS to that same runway, 27, that gives us all the way down to 200 foot ceiling, half mile visibility, and that definitely works for what we need. 
So as long as we know when we're looking at these charts that it's going to work for our minimums, do we know which ILS approach we're using or we just write that runway and know that it's good? Well, you need to, so you you do kind of a, just like we did here. You got to pick the runway and then you got to look on the approach chart, like right. like on these charts to make sure that those minimums Yes, but are, after we do that, do we have to write down which approach we're using? Yeah, we so when, we, when the, we go to this, this is where we're writing it, is right in here. Okay. So we're going to put in here runway 27. I'm going to go back up here for a second because this was asked. So, okay. All right. So if by using runway 27, um, we have to know, okay, is it grooved and is there, a, is this a head, are we planning a headwind? And yeah, you picked 27 because the wind was 280 at 10. So yes, it is a headwind, and it um, it is grooved. We didn't stop and look at that, but it, I did see it on the way down. So if you guys you guys know where to find that, so um, so I'll, up here I'm just going to write plus headwind. Um, I only mark if if I don't write like if it's not grooved, then I'll then I'll put like no in there, like you know not grooved. But if I don't put anything, then that just means it's grouped on mine. So just not to confuse you. But on yours, you can do, you yeah, can write little, yes, or you can, yeah, yes, and then plus headwind. Okay. The instrument approach that we're planning is the ILS. Yeah, and then you can put like a Z next to it because there's the two ILS approaches there, the Y and the Z, and we're planning the Z. Okay. The localizer frequency, do you, do you know where to find that? Yeah. Okay, because I just saw it. It's 110.1, but it's going to show you unless you guys know. No, yeah, you guys are good with that. Okay. The visibility that we need for this is one-half statute mile. And were there any notums for this approach? No. NA. Okay, good. Okay, now down to the... Destination alternate. So if there was a notum, would you just put yes? Or would you have to try to write that notum in there? You can write the whole note like that. <laughs> yeah, you just put yes and then the notum number. Yeah, you can put the notum number or um, it's really just you you can put yes and then they just know to look at the notums is all that really is for. Yeah. You don't have to put the notum number because you probably won't fit it. Okay. Great Falls. So what was our ETA into Great Falls if we have to divert there? It was like eight minutes more, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was 8.75, I think. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So let's go down and take a look at Great Falls. Okay, so if we're, our ETA is 23.43 into Helena and we're an additional 8.8 .8 minutes, let's just call that nine minutes, okay? Um, into, take us nine minutes to divert to Great Falls. So 23.43 and nine, so we have 23.52. It's gonna put us in that line. <laughs> okay. So what's uh, you're doing good with it? I don't know why you say you're not. The mental thing. Yeah, and uh, not being able to see it like you guys all have. You know? No, totally. Thanks. 
What was the weather? Well, we don't know that either. No, no, but you like right here and you can ask him. And he can like show you like one on one, or you could ask the friend. I don't know. Like at home, I'm just like, yeah, sure. I mean, you could ask too. We're all sitting here thinking the same thing too. Like, I'm not sure if this is right, but I'm not gonna say anything because I think everybody else gets it, and I'm the only one that doesn't. I mean, and then you talk later and you figure out that nobody else gets it either. I think we're all in the same boat. Yeah. So you're all right. So what was the weather on this? Two statue miles, rain, overcast at 010, zero zero, scattered 250. And let's see, so I'm just going to leave it just at the ceiling and then uh, 25 and then 2975. Okay, so 25, that was still with a negative one there. I'll have room for the altimeter, so. Okay. Um, while you are, while I'm bringing up the charts, you guys check the notes. Tell me when you need me to scroll down. Only 1634 closed, except for military. Do we care if they change the name of runway? We don't, right? No. It, do we, which one will it show up on the paper? On the paper, like that, 1634 changing to 1735? Yeah. Um, on the layout, it shows 1634. Okay. There's a wildlife hazard. Hmm. We don't care. Where was it when our airplane hit the data? <laughs> Oh, I can't remember. Not like That's on crazy. Tennessee or Kentucky or something? Oh, yeah, it was like on Chattanooga or something. I had yeah. a maintenance log the other day that they cleaned off bird and coyote remains. <laughs> mm. I get this in time. Had an armadillo strike one time. Yeah. With like a, what do you call it, a flock? I don't know, yeah. a bunch of bats. Like the we had a Canadian goose on in Oakland one time, and it pretty much took out like the whole nose gear. Mm -hmm. It still they could land, but it twisted the whole thing. <laughs> anyway, um, okay. So, seen anything? No. Okay, I'll scroll down. Okay, so how about FDC notes? Okay, and based on that wind, what was our wind? So based on the wind, which is the best one? 21. 21 is definitely the best for the wind. Okay. Um, we don't know. We did look at it yesterday when we did our alternate minimums. Well, let's go down and just take a look at the approaches. So we want to use 21. That's what we're thinking in our head because we want to use, we want to land into the wind. Yeah. We ended for our for our minimum for our alternate minimum calculation. Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. So let's go down and just see though. When, the way I do it though, if we haven't already looked at it, is I think okay. Well, I want to land on 21. So if I'm starting like new, haven't looked at any of them, you, you know, you're first going to look at the one that's into the wind, and just check it. So let's take a look. Um, I'm looking for just something to runway 21. So VOR runway 21, and the minimums are right there. So what are the minimums for that? Six. And one and a half. Let's see. So 
Ceiling? What's the ceiling minimums? 400. 400. Oh, yeah, you're doing the alternate minimum. So this is, yeah. Wait, so what? she was she was calculating the alternate minimums. What is the thing we talked about yesterday when we looked at Great Falls, like where you have to add, in order to plan it as an alternate, you have to add like 401 to the to the minimums you see here, or if you have another approach, you can do the two nav aid, the one nav aid, two nav aid rule is the alternate minimums. So, do have, but, so you do that now too. Yeah, so, so we look at it in. You're planning, but like right now. Well, is that yes. just to see if it qualifies as, as an, an alternate, alternate, but as when you're alternate. actually writing it down, you can write down the regular stuff? Yeah, so here, there's two parts to this. There's there's the first part that we already looked at was the alternate. That was in order for us to use Great Falls as an alternate. We found out that we could. We are now planning on it. Now we're looking at, okay, well, if they do have to divert there, if they actually divert there, then they're still going to just go off of these minimums. So the alternate minimums no longer apply because it now becomes their destination. But in order to have it as an alternate, you have to do the other. So in this case, we're looking at just the minimums. Yeah, so 400 and 1. So does this work with what the TAF says is going to be our weather at arrival? 2 miles, yeah. Overcast 1,000, yeah, it works. So that would be the first choice, right? So 21 would be the first choice. Yep, and it does have a headwind, barely, right? And the instrument approach that we're using is the VOR. Well, not even barely. That one has a strong headwind. It was three. Well, it was, so 21 would be the exact opposite. It would just be a three headwind. If three is a three tailwind, then 21 is going to be a three headwind. So it was just, most of this wind is a crosswind. I think it was like a 19 or something or whatever, crosswind. Well, how does that work? It's just the exact opposite of three. Okay. So if you're so if you're landing on runway three and you have a three knot tailwind. Yeah, I get what you're saying. If you just turned around like this, that three knot tailwind is just going to be a three knot headwind. <coughs> okay. So let's see the frequency on this one. 115.1. When you're doing wind speed, you average it with the gusts? Yeah. So we used 20 on that calculation when we did it. Because it, it was 15 gusting to 25. So the decision height visibility is 400 feet. Uh, no notums. And then on the, that first time when we were planning it originally, we were using just the uh, the one navigate rule. Now on this one too, it's probably worth putting a second runway in here just in case the weather falls below. You, so you can put runway three in this on the next line down. If we do plan runway three, it would be a minus TW. Oops. So it would be a tailwind. And that would be the ILS. And this would be the ILS. And if we use the ILS, let's go up and take a look at it. We can go down to 200 and a half. The localizer frequency is 111.3. The decision height vis, um, is, or sorry, the decision height visibility is one half. That's this one. I need to change to, I need to change that. We so we erase whatever you put there and put one statute mile, and back down to here. No notums. That's even still was just using the one that they so. 
So they have the two options. They can quickly look at this and just see that it's they got two they could land on either side technically. <clears throat> then that should be all you need on that page. Okay. So you could, at this point, like you could also fill out all of this stuff right now if you wanted, because now we do know all of our runways. We know our simplified. The only thing we don't know is most of this bottom stuff, which we'll figure out at the very end. But you can either fill this out now or you could fill it out at the end. It doesn't matter. So. Okay. So now that brings us to our regular IFR flight plan. Point of departure, Salt Lake City. Point of arrival, Helena. What flight number was this one? I think number seven. Flight seven. This, this was aircraft number seven six five. Seven six five? I thought we did seven six five this morning. Mm -hmm. huh. no, this is my plane at work. Ours this morning was uh, seven six five. Yeah. So the one, so the Phoenix Denver probably was like seven six two or something. Or seven, yeah, well, we'll figure it doesn't matter. Hopefully. Um, okay, so that's five. Come on. Flight plan packet, why aren't you showing up? Okay, so N765 this day. You can put your name over there as your dispatcher. So the alternate is KGTF. What was our flight level on this one? Flight level 310, right? Okay, and then our filed route, Salt Lake City dot dot tch dot j12 dot donnelly dot victor two five three dot mqg dot victor one eight seven dot mso dot victor two dot hln dot khln out of the long one okay So Salt Lake City to top of climb. We don't use a SID out of Salt Lake City, so most of this route is on J12. We don't know really any of the rest of this. So let's look at our flight planning charts here. Okay, so what is our ISA temperature for Salt Lake City? Yeah. 
2226 is Salt Lake City. So, say 43. What's our actual temperature? Uh, Salt Lake City. It is 31 degrees. I suppose 10. So walk me walk me through your okay, walk me through how you did it again. So so okay, so I did my twos, two, and then I added an extra one for the for the three hundred? Yeah. Okay, so you're at nine now, right? Fifteen minus nine. Well, so that's, see that, okay, so 15. So when you're doing your twos, mm -hmm. that is doing your subtraction from 15. So you don't, you don't minus 15, you don't do 15 minus nine after. You just, you're at nine. So if, when you are counting your twos up, so if you've got 4,300 feet at Salt Lake and you're going two, four, six, eight. That's it. Okay, so. So 15 minus 9 was, was what? 6. Okay, 15 minus 9. And then, so it should be 6, okay? And then, okay, but you got to use, so now we got to go to our actual temperature, though. I think that might have just been the, where you were hanging up a little bit. So, let me show you here. We'll just do it on the board. Are you feeling like that? Well, I'm having trouble with this one. Okay. So, okay, so what you want to know first is so see the METAR for Salt Lake City? Okay, so Salt Lake City. Oh, I missed this step. Oh my gosh. Salt Lake City is 31 degrees Celsius right now. Salt Lake City is 4,226 feet MSL. So you have to first convert here. I missed this stuff. I know exactly where I missed it. Okay. So... Jaden, then, if you're 4,226 feet above sea level. So you need 4 times 2 is 8, plus some yeah. change would be 9. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's 9, it should be 9 less than ISA is what that means. So then you've got to go to ISA, which, so you have to go 15, so that 9 you're taking off of the 15, all right? So it should be 15 minus 9 equals 6 degrees. So because as you're going up too, like if you're going so so if, if I set at sea level is 15, then at 1,000 feet it's 13. At 2,000 feet it's 11. 3,000, you know. So then I would be 6 at 4,200. Yeah, exactly. Got it. So, and then you're just going to go 31 minus 6. That's where I missed. So then it was 25. So the next one was 20. Minus 6 <laughs> equals 25. Minus. So then yeah, your ISA plus 9. Plus 
25 is what it is, but it's going to fit onto the ISO plus 20 chart. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to go back over here to our charts. We're going to go to ISO plus 20. And what's our what's our takeoff weight? But with white level restricted to 31. Yeah. Let's see this. Forever. Yeah, it's only nice to be so there's ISO plus 20 on the climb out. And what was the takeoff weight again, you said? 68474, so 69. Does everything above 20 fall on the plus 20 chart? Yeah. So we're gonna have to, we're gonna be in between 68 and 70 here. We gotta go down to 310. So it's going to be an average of those two boxes. <clears throat> 23.5 plus 24.6 divided by 2. Did you get a video interview email today? Did you apply? I don't even have a resume. Okay. So, yeah. I don't know when I to make one of those. I wish. I wish I had one done. And then Courtney both got emails for the video interview today. Nice. Okay, so the average on this one was 24.05. Oh, I got that. <laughs> <laughs> so that 24.05, or we're just going to say 24, is going to be our total time. Then the next one that we're looking at is our total distance. is going to be an average of 147.1 and 154.9. Divide that by 2, and that's 151. So we got a total distance here of 151. The total time was 24. And then what's the total burn? Did anybody average that up? So the average of 2333 and 2444. You're saying 2389? That's, yeah. No, I Three 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 plus two four 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 divided by two. Yeah, twenty three eighty nine. And then like on the next one, or it's just like the one number. Can you just always default to the like one figure, like on the airspeed three seven six three seven seven? Can you just go three seven seven? Yeah, that's fine. Three seven seven. Oh man, I feel real good about that right this second. <laughs> twenty three eighty nine. What was our takeoff weight one more time? 68474. 68474. Okay. Then my stop is 66. Um, Hold on just one second. Let's go back and fill this out first. 377. This next part is so our heading here. So this is part I want you to watch this part yeah. close. Okay, so we're just looking for a general idea of what our heading is going to be on this climb out phase. Most of our climb out is going to be, you know, starting in Salt Lake and headed this way towards that Donnelly VOR. Okay, so most of it's going to be along this J, sorry, the um, 
J12 route. Look, 296. Yeah, 296. Oh okay, so 296 right there. And this one, remember, we're not doing wind, but we're just going to type in ISO plus 20. Our magnetic heading is going to just stay as 296 because we're not doing wind, and our ground speed is going to stay at 377. Okay, now that number, Jaden. Where did we get the 377 from? Right here on the chart. So it's these two, 376 and 377. You just average those. But oh, that's just, the one she used to ask. Yeah. I don't remember writing that down. She just went with the higher one. So that's all. So what was the weight? 66085. Okay, 66085 is where our next leg is going to begin, but now we skip to the descent. Okay, so what is the ISA deviation for Helena? Why doesn't it ever bring it up? Okay, so to get the elevation, just go to the very top chart and right there, 3877. What's hell on this, Isa? I got plus 19 around 20. Yeah. Yep. It's about time. <laughs> <laughs> when you get smart to dumb down once we don't really have to do any smart and that's a good job. So. <laughs> How old are you, Jane? 23. Great time to get into it. Mm -hmm. The youngest age you that you possibly can. So tell me what you were saying now. yesterday about getting like a certificate of competency if you're not quite 23 yet. Do you have to do like your testing later or you just hand that in and get your license? No, it just... It's a form that the A list review. Yeah. It, it's just basically the, the FAR says you can't hold a certificate, a dispatch certificate, yeah. unless you're 23. You can take all of the courses and tests when you have to just be 21 to do all the courses and tests, though. If you pass it before you turn 23, then you get a certificate of competency. You don't have to redo it or retest or anything. You just get a certificate, and then as soon as you um, you get yeah, just a certificate of competency, and then as soon as you turn 23... They just mail you your real one. That's all. I've never, they I've never be actually before. been with anybody that's been, that's gotten it before 23. So I'm not 100% sure that it just like just shows up in the mail or if you have to call them or whatever. But either way, I, the only thing I do know is you do not have to redo the testing. That's all I know. You have to be 21 to even take the course. Yes, you have to be 21 to take the the test, even like the ADX, the practical. Or this class, you have to be 21, and then just 23 to have the certificate. Mm. <laughs> well, he's been trying to get me to this forever. Yeah, but I get a right age. And he only turned 23 last month, so. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, this would have been you're only literally two months. Later, you know, once you get all done, it will only be two months after you physically could have gotten it. So it's not bad.
And it would be the first hiring class, even if they already had it. So I guess it all works. Okay, so 6608. Okay, so the ISA for Helena is plus 20, and the landing weight. Oh, that's something What? 62821. What's that for? That's the landing weight. That's that oh, number you had written on your other piece of paper. Oh, gosh, there's a box for 62. Oh, <laughs> well, 62821. So we're going to round up to 63. Hate to rain on your prey. <laughs> so, uh, ISO plus 20 right here. Now this chart only goes up to 64. So it's the next one. Now what? Here's the other question now. So if our landing weight is 628, what? So what do we what do we do to the landing weight to calculate the descent? Huh? Add 500. Add 500. Okay. Because we're starting this calculation at our top of descent. So we don't, so, the only thing we know is what we lay oh, because way when we, we land. We know that it's going to take 500 to really Yeah, and, it's, and we, it normally takes less, but we just add it by 500 just to okay. be safe. So 63321. Yeah, I'm going to need to go back to the other chart. I don't know what I was thinking there. So it's going to make us round up to 64. Yeah. Makes sense. So now, now you're good, 64. And we're at 310. So we just have to use just the one box. There's no averaging. Oh, my goodness. Lucky day. Wow. We'll do this more often. I know. <laughs> and what's funny is, like, I mean, the, the chances are exactly the same, right? The odds of getting just the one box compared to the two. But we always get the freaking two boxes. So, or four boxes. Yeah, but even on the fours, you still only have to do two because you just go diagonal. So. Why would it tell me that? <laughs> you just take the highest numbers with the lowest numbers, and then you can get rid of the two middle ones. And it'll be it should be the same average. So, so 12.2 on the time, 199 pounds, and 73.9 miles. 12.2, 199, 199, pounds. 199 on the pounds. So I'm going to come down here. So it's 73.9 miles is the distance. What was it? 12.2 on the time and 199 pounds. Okay, so now we can... Come back over here. Did somebody grab the speed by chance? 365. Okay, so top of descent into Helena here. Um, so we don't have a star on this route. Most of this is going to be on the the Victor 2 airway. Just from our route. Yeah, it's like the very end. Yeah, it's before you get to Helena. So most of it's right there. This one is descent, so I'm going to just put my little arrow. Okay. What was that speed? 365? Yeah. Okay. And now let's go get the heading. So if most of it's on the Victor 2, I'll go to the low chart to bring up your. I'm going to go up to here first. So that's Helena. Here's the low. Here's your heading off of the Victor 2 from Missoula. So it's Missoula going into Helena, right? Yep. Oh, 084. It's right there. 084, right there. <laughs> okay. Zero. Eight four. Okay, we're using I suppose twenty again. Okay, and heading is still going to be zero eight four. So there's no wind, and our ground speed is still going to be 
365. <coughs> okay, good. Now we can we can also plug in our alternate info since we already have it. Great Falls K oops K G T F. This route is going to be direct. This is 25 miles by one. If you're going east, it would still be odd. So yeah, we'll just go flight level 250. Alternates, we just do 250 or 240, depending on what direction they're going. It's not going to be a big deal on your... This is, this is something that's just what you're writing here, but on your calculation, it's not going to make any difference. It's not going to throw your fuel off if you don't know this. So, so I could just throw it in the free one. Just because you were... Yeah. Yeah, that's it's not going to be something that's even looked at. So, um, go back to Sky Vector, and if we are going to Great Falls, which is right here, the airport itself is right. Oh yeah, it's right there. Okay, so if you're in Helena here, going up there, then all you got to do is just look at this Victor route that goes up to it. If you want your heading, it's just right there. Zero zero eight. Um, the speed we plan on this, we just we're leaving it at that at our original calculation of four hundred. Heading 008. You, know, you can leave that wind and temperature box blank. This is still going to stay at 008 on your magnetic heading, and your ground speed is still going to just stay at 400. What was our total distance? Okay. 58.3 to Kalispell or to Great Falls? Is it to Great Falls? Okay. To Great Falls, though. I just know we started with Kalispell and then oh, we changed it. Okay, so 58.3. So we'll say 8.8. .8. And then the burn. I'm getting there. I have alternate reserve fuel, 2938. 438. 438, okay. Yeah, that sounds familiar. 438. Oh, I added the reserve and the 438. Okay. So that's all in there. We've got top of descent, top of climb. Okay, so let's go figure out where top of climb is. That is 151 miles along our route from Salt Lake. Back to Salt Lake, back to the high chart. Okay. So let's take a look here. Turn on our mini log. From Salt Lake to the Wasatch VOR is 3.7 nautical miles. The, the nav. The big thing here is I don't like because you're going to be adding these up mm -hmm. manually. I want you guys to kind of get into the habit of looking at these numbers. Oh, okay. So the only thing that you're going to have to measure on this one is Salt Lake to the Washouts VOR, which you got to whip out the ruler. It's it's 3.7 miles. So on the ruler, I mean, you're probably going to see between like three and four. So you'll put either three or four. Not going to make a big difference, but it's 3.7 to be exact. And then the next part of this route is it's 149. See this right here? So from the Wasatch VOR going on J12 all the way to Twin Falls, that's 149 miles. So how far was our top of climb? It was 151, right? So if we're 151 plus the 3.7, or sorry, 149 plus the 3.7, we're already past 151, right? So that means our top of climb is going to be 
literally just right here before Twin Falls, like a mile or two before Twin Falls. Is it 1.7? That's how far it is. Okay, because they have 3.7 plus 149. Yeah, 1.7. So 1.7 miles before Twin Falls. So just just notate that on for your for your first leg. Because our first leg, we're going to do top of climb to, let's see what we want to take it to. So if we keep going along our route here, um, our top of climb is just right in here. So it's basically all, almost right at Twin Falls. So for our first leg, Top of climb to, so it's 156 miles, it's showing here, up to the Donnelly VOR. And then at the Donnelly is when we switch down to the low, to the Victor routes. But it still is the same information. So from Donnelly, or sorry, from, yeah, from Donnelly to the Nez Perce VOR is 101. So if we take 101 and 150, was it 156? Yeah. Plus the 1.7. Plus the 1.7. 258.7. 258.7. Okay. That's a, that's a pretty good distance for a first leg. And then the next thing, the, the nice part about it is, too, is once you get to Nez Perce, you, like, take a 90-degree right turn. So... We definitely don't want to go any further than this because the wind and the heading is going to totally change going this way. Okay, so for our first leg, we're going to go. We're going to go top of climb to MQG. Most of that route is going to be on. J12 slash V253. We're going to be at flight level 310. And the only thing that we know is the distance so far. How far was that again? 258.7. 258.7. So you guys good with how we added up those totals? Because it's the 1.7 from top of climb to Twin Falls. Then 156 and then 101. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's 258.7. 258.7. Okay, so this this uh, distance on this one's 258.7. Then divide that by 400 to get our. Well, not yet, because we don't have any of this information yet. We have to get our ground speed before we do any of that. So this isn't because that 400 is just used on the just the initial. So this is the real one now. So we need to go and take a peek at our winds aloft, which I think yeah I've got to go in here and cross out the ones. Too. Can you let me do a black highlighter? Well, I can do what I normally do is I just go um, back to the tool. Yeah, we did this. Yeah. Um, on the board, I think we're just standing on this computer. Just trying to remember. Oh, I just need to do one first, I guess, and then I can select it. So I know we're not going to use Rock Springs. Get white, and then turn that white as well. Okay. All right. 
so we don't need we don't need crazy woman lander or medicine so we don't need I see that I have to reselect it every time Patello Billings Dylan Blasco or Kalispell yeah, and then we don't need Miles City. So those are the only ones we need. Salt Lake, Du Bois, the Lewiston, to Great Falls. <clears throat> so I'll just write them down here. Okay, so we're going to be at flight level 310, so we're going to be in between 30,000 and 40,000. So for Salt Lake City, will this be Salt Lake? That's the heading is the same, so we'll just keep that at 260 at. Then we got 52 and 60. 56. So yeah, we'll just plan 56. Then ISA temperature 49 and 42. So difference of seven. So we'll just add three to it in this case because three is more restrictive because it stays warmer. Yeah, so 45. Negative 45. So the next one, Boise. It's going to be... Oh, wait. Yeah, they're all... Okay, good. Yeah, they're all the same. 260. Yeah. Okay, that works nice. Except for Lewiston and Great Falls. 28. 28. I think I messed. We messed up Salt Lake. That yeah, the top one is Boise. So, oh. so this one should be the 56 and the negative 45. Salt Lake is going to be, so look at those bottom ones, so the average of 75 and 85, so that's just going to be 80 on that one, and then the temperature is 45 and 38, so a difference of 7, so 41. Okay. Then Lewiston is 270, 270 at... 25 and 31, so at 3 to 28, temperature 52 and 45, so that'll be 48. And then Great Falls, 250, on the speed. Are you sure? 28 and 39? Averaged? Or are you giving me the temperature? I don't know. I thought that's what I do. 28 and 39. 28 and 39. I mean, it couldn't be 47 because it's higher than both of them. Did I say 47? That's what I heard. 33? Well, the temperature is 48. Let me go back and do that other part again. Okay, so we'll just say 34, and then negative 48. Okay, so on the uh, first leg, most of that first leg is just going to be Boise to Lewiston, because Boise is closer, Twin Falls is closer to Boise. So, <clears throat> so I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to put First leg. 
So let's average Boise and Lewiston. That's going to be 265 at 56 and 28. So, so 14 added onto it. 42 and negative 46. We're averaging Boise and Lewiston together now. Okay. So 265, and then 42 with those, and then negative 46 with those. Okay, so if this is at 31,000 feet, what is our ISA temperature? We're at 31. It's normal that it's like super high, right? What's that? It's normal that it's like super high, right? Um, I guess high as in what? As in like above plus 20. No, this one shouldn't be, I don't think. So, um, what are you getting? I'm about to get seven. 37? Mm -hmm. What are you getting? Okay, so what's the IVD, ISA deviation then? Okay, that's right. So ISA plus one is correct. So on this one, just if you, um, so if you go 31, times two, is that what you're doing? 31, so like 31,000, so just take 31 times two. Okay, I was doing 3,100. Oh, okay, then yeah, that might be. So if you just go 31 times two is 62, minus your 15 from that, should be 47, and it's 46, so it's just I sub plus one. Okay. So we are at ISA plus 1, but it's going to round up to 5. So we'll be at ISA plus 5 on the chart. Okay, and then the only other thing is what's our heading for that first leg? This thing is so slow to respond. Doing that Donnelly one? Right. So it's going to just be, so it's going to be Twin Falls to Donnelly. So that's 314 on that one, and then the next one, leaving Donnelly, is 325. So just an average of those two would work. Sorry, 319. So 314 is the first heading, Twin Falls to Donnelly, and then Donnelly to Nez Perce is 325. So if you just take those two and average them. Yeah, sure. We'll just use 320. Okay. So that's our heading now, the magnetic one. That's going to be, box. yeah, that'll be the heading for when we need it. So I'm going to write it back right here, just heading 320. Okay, so that's what we need for our first leg. So let's go and do the math on it. <clears throat> let's go to the charts. Okay, 
So now we're going to go to the cruise charts. That's still a climb chart there. Still climb. Still climb. I swear these things just repeat. Okay, so cruise, that's ISA. Now we need to go to ISA plus five. That one's still ISA. Now we're ISA plus five. Next chart. Still the next one? For 66,000 pounds? Yes. Okay. What was our weight going into this leg? 66,085. So everything just right here. 310, 66,000. Two in a row. We're on a roll. <laughs> Okay, so now with this one, just remember, you just look, you just need two numbers, just two. Yeah, so you need this burn number, sorry, this burn number right here, the 1812, and then double it. So I'm going to put burn equals 3264, and then 364. Okay, and then the speed was 452, right? Um, 452. <laughs> Why? Why? Four, five, six. All that to get that. Okay. All right. That's the ground speed? Well, that's the true airspeed. So we're starting back in this column now. Okay. There we go. Four, five, six. That heading was 320. Our average. So we're gonna on these ones. I actually type in the wind because we start using wind on these ones. So what was the wind? Two six five. Two six five five forty two. Okay. Now get out your app. Clear it out. <laughs> <laughs> True course is 320. Remember, that's your heading. True course. True airspeed, 456. Wind direction, 365. Wind speed, 42. Two courses, 320. Yep. Airspeed, 465, 456. 456. One direction is 265. What does it look like on your screen before we're using? This one? I think that's my problem. Like I get into the app and I don't know which one to go into. You know, like you go in functions and then you click in. So I think that's where I get Yeah. So what? Ground speed, 431. Okay. Everybody getting 431? Yeah. Two airspeed, 456. Wind direction, 266. And now is that the new true heading? 416. What does everybody else have? Ground speed, 431. Mm -hmm. So true course would be that. Yep. And then four, five, six. For some reason. So this thing is really glitchy. It's not that you typed in anything wrong. 
but mine did this exact same thing. It, it you typed in 265 right here, but it sometimes it glitches, so just retype in 265. So once I notice that once I get done, I have to recheck it to make sure it didn't like it just auto changed it for some some reason. So now it's right. So be careful on this. When you get down to the bottom, yeah. make sure, go back and double check your numbers. Just, just looking at them, just make sure they match up again because I've noticed that this thing will, it'll change your wind direction after you're done typing everything in. It changed my true course too. I had to type that one twice, but I noticed it when I did it. Yeah. So if you notice it, great, but like I just am not noticing it so until I get to the bottom. I did it earlier today. Remember when you had the right one and I had the wrong one? Yeah. It did that exact same thing. And so now, the, so the ground is for one, but the true heading is 316. Yeah, so let's go back to this. So now this heading is 316. So now that, okay. Okay. And this is 431. Okay, so then now, for my brain, totally unprepared or unstuck. So with the heading and tail in it, we have it right now. Which ones do you do? So I guess I, I'm not sure what your question is. So do you take one of the speeds or one of the courses, subtract it from each other? Yeah, so just go now looking back at your true airspeed, mm -hmm. take that and minus it from your ground speed. Okay. Or just go 456 minus 431. Okay, that's what I'm like. And that'll tell you your headwind. 25 knot headwind. It's actually pretty good. Just wait till you fly Chicago Boise. Oh, I, if you ever have to. Yeah, Chicago Boise, the middle of winter, you're going to get headwinds of 140. Yeah. <laughs> so. My life's forever Oh, and it's over down. It's up, well, not ever, but up and down the coast, more than just Dallas Red Eyes. Yeah, and which you're... even coming back on that in the winter was. Whoa. Oh yeah, yeah, that's bad. <laughs> I did all this for five and a half hours. Yeah. But um, it's just so I think I think my plan, but yeah, so yeah, then we have them in the game, Chicago Bulls. Yeah, you will eventually. Yeah, Chicago. I have to go back to work tonight. <laughs> yeah, that sucks because Boise connects to too much stuff now. Well, so you're gonna get looped into like Chicago trips a yeah, lot, like because you're gonna start out. You're gonna your first leg will be Boise, Chicago, yeah. and then you'll spend four days in the Chicago system and then come back. Yeah, and that's what it's like when they go our trips. They never float back to Boise. Yeah. And just start and end. That's yeah, it. That's so fun. you can never do Boise overnights. Yeah, or Unless you have a lucky middle of the trip, Chicago yeah, Boise. Which, you know, that's what everyone wants is your trip to pull back for your home base so you can drop your slot or whatever. But yeah. This morning, that's what I did this morning. I was bidding because I was like, I've got to get this done before it closes. That's in there. So how did, when you did yours, well, let's finish this yeah. and then I'll ask you. Okay, so, okay, so we've got 431 ground speed. So now we've already got our distance. Now we need to figure out our time. So I have a question on that. Yep. Do you use the true airspeed for that one? Nope. Ground speed? ground speed is used for all of the fuel calculations. So that's why we had and to wait time. to get it. Yeah. Okay. okay. So calculators. Time equals distance. Divided by ground speed. 0. 0.600. 0. 0.600. That's a nice easy one to remember. So write that one down. Put a circle around it. Times it by 60. Times it by 60 now to get your time. 35. What? Should have been 36.01. 0.60. No. Uh, go to. So go, so go, just go back to the first part. So do your, your distance divided by your ground speed. Okay. Equals. Okay. Now just remember that number, write it down, circle it, and now just times it by 60. So 
So don't clear it and then type it in again okay. because you're missing all those decimals on the end. That's what the difference was. So we'll just call it 26. Okay. Oh, 36. Good. 36. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And then so the burn is going to be. So remember the total burn per hour was the 3642 number. Yeah. Do you remember where we got that from? 3624. Yeah, 3624. 3, 4. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Flip flop. So I got that number. 3624, right? And that's what we times by the 0.6. Yep. Times that by 0. 0.600. 3624 times 0. 0.6. What's that? I'm getting 2,174. So you take this 3624. Yeah, so 3624 times, times 0. 0.6. That's what I did. Let's do it again then. This is where I need to break down. 3624 times 0. 0.6. Yeah, but it's Must have just been hit the divide button or something. Who knows? Just on this next column right here. So that's your total fuel. So for that leg, 2001. Okay, so the 3624 I wrote there, but I'm just actually saving that number until later. I'm not. Because you have to use that as your multiplier. To get your because that's your 3642 is the burn per if you went a full 60 minutes but since you're not going 60 minutes you're timesing it by the 0.6 to get your 36 minutes so just get that number and set it aside somewhere yeah and so like on me I wrote it in my notes mm -hmm. I put it in my notes right here under my first leg 3624 okay. now this is not going to go back Did you point four? Did you just round up? I want twenty one seventy five. So now let's minus. <laughs> so were you comfortable on how we got to the twenty one seventy four then? Yeah, because I had my numbers all wrote down. It's just remembering where to go, like the. Distance over speed, that is like, fine. it's clicking into place, like, okay. But then it's just, go back and get that burn. Yeah. Just, yeah, just you got to use that decimal that. for time and then use it again for fuel. Yeah, so. it's just the breakdown of the map right now for me. Is just, yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, what is our new weight going into the next leg? You just take that fuel burn. Just take this weight and minus that from it, and then just carry it down here. 63,910. Okay. Yep. Taking a break. Let's go on to the next leg now. <clears throat> so the next one is going to be starting at Nez Perce. Can you tell me what that number the code is on Nez Perce? MQG. Oh, yeah, it's weird. So this one. Come on, you don't see how they get that? <laughs> no, I don't. We can probably take this one and go from here all the way to top of climb, or sorry, top of descent. So um, we need to go figure out where top of descent is now. So let's go back into that. So 73.9 miles backtracking from Helena. So let's go to Helena. And we're going to just use this. Um, we're going to figure it out by ourselves here. Cool. So Helena 
back to the Helena VOR is 1.2 miles. So other than that, let's figure out how far it is. So, 90. so that's 90, so that's already past it, right? So 91.2 going all the way back to the Missoula VOR. So what was 73.9. So 72.7 in went towards Missoula. So 91.2 minus 73.9, right? So 17.3. What? I got 17.3. Well. Okay, so it's 17.3 miles after the Missoula VOR. So just remember that. And then our next leg is starting at Nez Perce. So it goes Nez Perce to Missoula, which is 119. You get that right there. And then add that 17.3. Nez Perce to Missoula is 119 right there. And then from here to your top of climb is 17.3. 136.3. Okay, so we know that 136.3. So this is going to be MQG to TOD. And most of this is going to be on Victor 187. We're still at flight level 310. And we don't know anything else besides that. So let's go consult our charts. Um, let me go back to this for a second. So entering this leg, we are 63,910 pounds. So we are, yeah, so still, yeah, 64. Let's go up one. And we, well, we need to first figure out our winds and stuff too. Okay, so... On this leg, it's going to be Lewiston to Great Falls. So I'm going to write it on over here, second leg. Second leg is going to be 260 on the wind heading. 31 miles per hour. 31, and then negative 48 will stay the same, right? Okay. So we already know ISA for 31,000 feet, right? It's negative 47 degrees. So now we are, if we're negative 48. We're some ballpark. What did you say? I said we already, because, because we're still at 31,000 feet, right? 31,000 was the same as the okay. first leg. So we already figured out ISA for that altitude. It's negative 47 degrees. So this one, because it's negative 46, this was ISA plus 1. This is negative 48, so it's ISA minus 1. Minus one. So ISA minus 1. Now here's the, here's the little tricky part about when you go into ISA. So if it's ISA minus 1, which chart are we using? A different one. Yes, but which one? ISA minus 10. Nope. Remember, so in this you still just ISA. just ISA because you're rounding up, up. Oh. So it's still warmer. So you got so now your negative temperatures will round the other way because you got to stay going high. So ISA is higher than ISA minus five, right? As far as your temperature goes. Okay, so this chart is just going to be ISA. We've never used just ISA, have we yet? Mm -hmm. This is going to be fun.
What's that? Oh, I was just looking at her. What are we? Let's go into it. 639. Oh, we better just use 64. Yeah, we, we're going to. Get rid of that. Okay, so as far as the heading for this leg. What's our heading? Well, the thing is, is so the thing is, it does, there are, there are a lot of steps. But the thing is about all of these steps is that even if you don't remember the steps, you're going to, you're going to, the box is going to remind you. Yeah. Not really. No, like, well, you can't leave a box blank. But that doesn't mean you know how to get it. But it still at least reminds you of, hey, of how to go get I, it, you know, or it's where, like of what you need. That pointless thing that uh, Neville has on Harry Potter is remember all. It's like, great, you forgot something. <laughs> what? Well, I just think a lot of people get in this mode of thinking that they need to remember every little step. And what, even if it's the flight plan or if it's even any of the first part, there's something on that flight packet that's going to remind you of every last little thing. So, like, even if you didn't do the one nav, let's say you didn't do the one nav, two nav rule, the alternate minimums, the most recent thing we've learned. You're going to get to that box. If you have an alternate, that's the only time you need to use it anyway. But if you're filling out that box, you're going to get to the end of that box. It's going to say one nav a, two nav a, and you're going to be like, oh, yeah. You know, at least you have something in there that shows you and tells you, you know, so that if you did forget a step, it's going to mean you didn't, you're going to miss a box, too. At this part, I just remember that I, it's basically where we're getting all that information off the charts. And so then I just try to think what information we need to give the information off the charts. So this heading from Nez Perce to Missoula, 054. And then we go 17 miles on this heading, which is 084. Average is 069, but it's mostly. It's mostly 054, right? Yeah. So. Should we call it 060? That's what I was going to say. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> okay, so heading zero six zero. Okay, so we're gonna go to the chart now. Okay, that's the thing. And that goes into the first, like the MC box? No. The heading does, yes. Yes. Okay, so we're 64,000, right? Yeah. At ISA. Mm -hmm. And still at 31,000 feet. So look at that. Three in Three? a row. Three? Three in a row. So. Oh, Which the, box is that? This one right here. The last one. Makes it easy to find. 1768 and 451. So you got to double the 1768. Oh, I, I always forget that. That's so dumb. I know. It's kind of weird that we just can't kind of switch that. Yeah. Yeah. Because why, because the reason why the reason. Because one is in the reason, the reason why they don't is because if you have an engine fail. But then you could just say, we'll just divide it by two then. Yeah. Right? But no, trust me, nothing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> or is it because like maybe you're not okay, always doing two this? engines so that you could do? You know, no, never mind. That is one engine. Because isn't it per engine? <laughs> but this plane is a just two engine plane, so and these charts are only oh, for on that those plane. Oh, on this Yeah. So. But yeah, on this, yeah. You get, you get all worked up and you're like, uh, never mind. <laughs> so what's seventeen? What's seventeen sixty eight doubled? Three five three five three six. Three five three six. Okay. And then we were at 451. Okay, so I'm coming back over here and filling in all this information. Okay, 451. That's what the box is? Yep. We just get it straight in. We got it right off the chart. 060 on the heading. 
What's the wind for this leg? Uh, 260 at 31. 60 at 31. Okay. Get out your app. Oh, I got it ready. Clear it. True course, 60. True airspeed, 451. What? No. Yep, 451. 260 on the wind direction. 31 on the wind speed. Just double check to make sure it didn't switch you on anything. Okay. Yeah, just round that to 59. 59. Five nine. Four eighty on the ground. And this is where we do the distance times the ground speed, right? Distance divided by the yeah. ground speed. I'm just going to let you guys tell me the answers. Actually, I'm going to let Andrea tell us all the answers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what did you get? Are you ready? Yep. So what's your time? Good. And what's your fuel? One zero zero one. One zero zero one? I That's what I got. One zero zero one. One one zero zero four. It would depend on your decimal point. Yeah. Yeah, I just went yeah. I mean you're close regardless, but yeah. Sounds good enough to me. We're within the five hundred pound reach. We're here arguing over a pound, two pounds. Yeah. So 17. We'll just put. Yeah. 17. And 1,001. One. Okay, that's fine. Got my comma. Okay. That's going to be some easy subtraction. Two nine oh nine. 
Very good. Now carry that down to here. Let's go ahead and this next one down here, just minus your, so that's going to be 62, 7, 10. We're just moving it down here, and now we're minusing off of this descent fuel. Hey, it's just, I just went minus 200 and then backed it off by one well, for 199. That's 62, 708. <laughs> that's a 708? Yeah. Yeah, that does make more sense. Okay. No? Yeah. I got 10, too. I it should be 10. No. no. Add... 708 plus 200 is 908. 62909 minus 199. 62710. How do you get how do you add 99s and get a 10? Oh, because we're missing and we took it the wrong Take way. Take your weight. 629090 yeah. right, minus 199. 62710. So we were like adding it and taking it. Make me feel dumb for a minute for no reason. I I had already I had already done it. I was with you. I already done it and then you guys changed it from I already had everything done. And oh, you guys changed it to one oh one one. And so I had to go back through and so I just eyeballed it like, okay, minus yeah. three, you know, I just went through and hey, so I was off. Five hundred pounds. Yeah. <laughs> one thousand. Did I one thousand? I wanna get, I wanna see how close I can get to it. Okay, well, we've got it. So let's add up the total burn. So let's start over here. <clears throat> 151. And we don't add in the alternates. Don't. Do not add the alternates. 151, did you say? Yeah, I'm... I'm adding the distances up right now. Oh. You say burn and throw out that number. I'm like, what? Okay. So that 500 pounds, we add that back in for the descent when we're doing the fuel burn totals, or no? No, we just were using it as an estimate, so we never added it into this. No, I know. We, like, minus it from the takeoff weight, and I'm saying to add up the whole burn. Are we adding that 500? Like, as if we burned it when we landed? You mean for the alternate, or...? No, never mind. I'll figure it out as we go. Yeah, I'm not sure what you're asking, so. But you were saying like the descent. What are you talking about when we added 500 for the descent? Yes, yeah, so we had our, our landing weight and we minus 500 because that was going to be the burn weight. On the top for, of the descent? Yeah. So I'm saying when we're adding up all the total burn to see like our total total burn, are we adding in that descent 500 also? No, because we never really minus that out. That's the thing. I know we never, never. Just, yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm. I'm just thinking this step after that. Not that we took it out. I know we didn't take it out. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, I just want to make sure you're not confusing it with something else. That's why I, I like want to know specifically kind of what you're trying to say. So, so I'm thinking if we're trying to figure out, like, say we're on the ground and how much fuel we burned entirely. This is how much we burned until we got to the top of the descent. And now are we pretending that we burned that 500 descending? So this fuel here that we're adding up is all the way to landing on the ground because this is now including that 199 right here. So this 199. Oh, I see the top of descent to. To Helena is this, that 199. Yeah. 
So we ended up, we put 500 on it to estimate, but then we realized, you know, we ended up finding out that it was just 199 and that's why we put the 199 right there. On your burn? No, including the ultimate. 2389 plus 2175 plus 1001 plus 199. I'm not sure how I'm getting 5764. 5764. What'd you get? 5764 total burn. Oh, yeah. So, how does that look? What was that simplified fuel? Simplified fifty seven. Oh, you know what it is? Because I added it up as I went and so then I'm adding all of them. <laughs> so I've got oh, like an extra. Okay, yeah. Like you know, twice. Um, so on the speed you do the Eighty-nine divided by sixty, right? Eighty-nine. And you get your one hour, and then forty-eight minutes. Yeah. Easier, easier thing to do on that is just take your eighty-nine and just minus sixty from it. Right. And now you know it's one hour twenty-nine minutes. Well, that's where I'm stuck. <laughs> so thanks. So pretty close. This one now, so this one was within 64 pounds overall. Our simplified fuel was 5,700. Our final fuel was 5,764. Not too shabby. The thing is about the final fuel too. So on the simplified, you're always really going to the nearest hundred, you know. So you can kind of even say that you might have been at 5760, you know. So with drawing all those really straight lines that we draw on that simplified thing, I think it's pretty easy to say that we may have. Missed 50 pounds. <laughs> but either way, it's close enough. So. How much does a gallon of Jeffco weigh? 6.7 pounds. So just divide that by 6.7, and that'll give you your gallons. Hey, Aubrey just got on. Great timing, Ops. Hi. Hi. Thanks for coming. <laughs> I know. Are you guys going to be on for a while? We're actually just finishing. Dang it. Okay, well, I'll just watch the end. Sorry. All right, Love you're you. fine. We just got done. Um, doing all the legs on the uh, Salt Lake Helena. We finished it. So the only thing we haven't, yeah, the only thing we haven't done is that. So do you feel like you know how to get those? Um, oh, well, I didn't even know we had to do those. Which one? Which uh, one is it on here? You didn't watch the Saturday video then, did you? I don't have, That's I wasn't in the know. B speed one. I didn't see it at B well, speed on here. Even if I did, I think I would have forgotten because I did them with Aubrey. But I do know I need to do that. Well, let's turn that on. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> well, there. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I was like, I gotta go print those and make you guys actually have those help. And I was so excited I got the stamp.
Because I went in and I didn't see the beast feet. Are they attached to something else, maybe? So they are in the CRJ700 performance. So you go into the performance and you got to bring up the performance cards file. I can show you right where they're at on the Google Drive if that's what you're trying to find them right Yeah, maybe that will help. That's why I haven't looked into it because they're the performance. Okay, so here is the performance cards. Okay, so what is our takeoff weight? Well, I'm getting too much weight. Takeoff weight, 68585. 68585? Five, five. Five. So 69,000 pounds? Is that what everybody else has? I thought it was 66. Takeoff weight? On this takeoff? Yeah, for Salt Lake Helena. Oh. 68474. What are you guys looking at? On our weight and balance? Yeah. For the takeoff weight? So, uh, did you guys start filling in all of this all of this stuff here? I didn't. No, I did. But I did it wrong. Why? Okay, so the burn off is just the 5764. Yeah, I forgot the one on the front of this one. Alternate is 438. We didn't do any hold fuel. So our takeoff fuel is 8,702. Okay, and then our ramp fuel. Did you round down on that? Nine. Shouldn't it be eight nine five two? Eight nine five two. Once again, arguing over two pounds. <laughs> <laughs> What's the bow weight? Four four eight seven three. Four four eight seven three. It's a good problem to have though. Two pounds. Two pounds. Payload is one five zero one zero. Zero one zero. And my zero fuel was 59883. 59883. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to take off with a 8702. I had a 69883. For your zero fuel weight? Mm -hmm. That's 59. Yeah, I'm there. So you just had 10,000 pounds more for some reason. Now that's. Too much. <laughs> That's going to be over that a lot, but we were just talking about 8,702, so it makes a takeoff weight of 68585. Burn off once again. 5764 and landing weight. Six two eight two one. So then now on this paper we use that landing weight or do we lose we use our original now balance? we all of our numbers going forward we use these numbers that's, now. That's right. Yeah. That's original. Okay, good deal. So our takeoff weight six eight five eight five means we're gonna have we're gonna go to sixty nine thousand pounds on this. I'm going to scroll all the way down, 66, 67, 68, 69. Okay. Because we got to round up on our takeoff weight. We're 68,500 and something, so we got to go to the nearest thousand above it. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, takeoff weight, sorry. Okay, so elevation of Salt Lake City. 4226. 4226. So on that one, we're above 4,000, so we got to go over to 6,000. Remember, we're, on, we're always going to use this flaps 8. Okay, so since we're above 4,000, we got to go to 6,000. And then what's the temperature in Salt Lake? Uh, 31. Okay, so we're, gonna, we're above 30, so we got to go to 40. So we're going to be over... Here. 
So, 134. Okay, and then keep going down, your VR is also 134. I was fixing my weight and balance. Can you show me where we're putting this? Like where on the chart we're writing this? Yeah. It's actually going to be on this next page right here at the bottom. Right here, V1. 134. VR, 134. And then our V2 is going to be 139. So go to your weight and balance, go to your takeoff index and draw that line straight up and 22, you got your takeoff, um, you got your weight and balance on that. The number I have or my weight and balance chart? Right there. Just that regular? Yeah, so go into that. And then, do you have your stuff plotted in here? So you need to know where that is. So plot that takeoff weight and index. Now just draw a line straight up. So yours is just below the 20. So basically 21 if you round it up on yours. Okay. So if you're at, so 20... So this is that chart that we're looking at now. So we're at 69,000 pounds, and there's 21, there's 23. So if you're either going to be, so for yours, you're going to be 7.5, and you're, you'd be 7.1. I did 7.5 on mine as well. Yours is down at 19. Yeah, that's fine. You might just have loaded your plane differently then. Yeah. It all depends on how you loaded your plane. So, anyway, that's how you get it, though. So let's just say we'll just call it 7.5. And what's our landing weight? 62, 821, right? Yes. So we're gonna go. What? 62, 8, 18. Okay, so we, we got to go down. So we're rounding that up to 63,000. So we're going to go down to 63,000. A a 63,000 takeoff, but you're going to scroll to the bottom for landing, and then your landing speed is right there on the far right under 45 degree flaps. So 130. And that's going to be. Oops. Form. Straight over here, 130. The rest of that stuff, you guys should be able to just fill in or get it from somewhere else on your charts that you already have, um, and then fill out your front page. But all of the information you have to fill out anything else is now on your release mm -hmm. somewhere. So. Mm. That should be it. There's a typo on this chart. There is? Mm -hmm. Crap. On L Avation. Oh, yeah, you're right. There's people at Salt Lake Community College. <laughs> yeah, that, that's where you know it's a community college, right there. Um. 
So they say about teachers at community colleges? They, they usually leave and start their own business. <laughs> what? So the pilot have tablets and it has not been well. Oh. And so because instead yeah. of like going with like the software SkyWest has these people come in and make it and they use their internal and everyone's like, oh, it's these guys, I have it, it's these guys, I, I do this. I mean, that kind of doesn't work. We're having fun IT issues with them today. One minute countdown to the air conditioning turning on. Bam. All right. Which signals the end of class? Look at that. We beat the air conditioner two days in a row. Actually, yesterday we didn't really beat it, huh? We didn't. There's. It's traumatizing. <laughs> okay. Are you still alive? Funny thing is, is these like <laughs> Caden and Courtney and Aubrey are so like, like just imagining cozy. exactly just what happened. Okay, well that's it. Okay. Any questions from uh, you online peoples? Yeah, I mean, I have a question, but I'll wait until tomorrow's class. Because, <laughs> because you know we got the air conditioning that just turned on? Yes, and that's hell, so. <laughs> well, if it's a quick question, just if it's if it's quick, just ask. Or if unless okay. you... Well, I don't know if it's quick. I just want to know where we get the numbers for our alternate, because I know that there's only the one line for the alternate on our IFR flight plan chart. Uh huh. So I'm just wondering, like, where do we get our winds aloft, or how we, you know, get those numbers? I guess. So. Okay. So. Um, I'm already on that chart. Okay. So right here, you're wondering how we got all of that. Yeah, and we don't have to go over the whole thing. I just. just well, so I'll just. It, it'll be really easy to tell you because. When we calculate the alternate burn, we just do. We're just simply using the numbers from the very beginning initial fuel, that's it. So so when we calculate the alternate, you do that, you know, at the very beginning when you do 4,000 pounds for the first hour, 3,000 for the second hour. Yeah. You go ahead and do that all the way, you know, for your destination. And then on your alternate, you just do a separate little calculation that just goes from your destination to your alternate. You still use the same 400 speed and you just use the 3,000 pounds per hour and you just, you do the route is just direct. We don't build a route for it and we don't use winds for it. Oh, okay. And then you just plug that information into this. Okay. All right. I think that it'll be easy. Once I watch one, maybe I'll try and uh, jump on tomorrow and watch you do one. Yeah. Um, and Courtney, Courtney, Courtney just asked what OAT means, and that's outside air temperature. Anything, anything else? No, thank you. Okay. All right, then we will. So yeah, we'll be, we'll have class tomorrow at 5:30 here again. If you want to come, or if you want to get online, or whatever. So. And then, of course, Saturday morning at 9. Yeah, I'll be there on Saturday for sure. Okay. Sounds good, then. We will talk to you guys all tomorrow, then. Thanks. Bye, guys. See ya. Bye. Ugh,